What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online, and how's it going, Heist? How much money do you got? Let's Dude, start. Uh, doing pretty well. I've got $1941. Okay, so, 1941. You know. Okay, what's the next engine? We we need a goal here. What's our next we do, goal? We is do the, need a goal. Is the Mosca? Is that what it is? Is that... Mosca, Mosca would be cool. Mosca the... would be fun, uh, and actually, I think it would be really fitting, because uh, Mosca was originally supposed to be a locomotive for the Denver and Rio Grande, but ended up getting bought by the East Broadtop in Pennsylvania. Interesting. And just today, the East Broadtop, when we're recording this, actually posted footage of their first steam engine running uh, since, God, probably over 10, 15 years ago. They finally completed the restoration of the 16. So uh, they've got steam back in service. So it'd be good to honor the Broadtop. All right, well, the uh, Mosca is like... Other than the Eureka, the Mosca is the next cheap engine. Um, the Eureka is twenty nine hundred, but like we'll get one of those eventually. Um, but the Mosca is is thirty six hundred, so we'll have to make a little bit more money. Um, I guess onward to the lumber camp. We're gonna get lumber and supply it to the ironworks. I heard rumor, right? I heard through the. Grapevine. I've heard some rumors too. I've heard yes. some rumors that cranes actually are automatic now. So. Yeah, we need to go uh, test that out. I also yeah. heard another rumor that uh, I'm going to need everyone to be silent for here. Let's go. Oh, the smoke chuffs. The smoke chuffs and the, the, the chuffs are synced to the wheels, but Kume, bro, bro, it's four chuffs per revolution, not three. <laughs> Is it always? It, I couldn't even tell that it was three, honestly. You you have like a, a super sensitive ear for this. I couldn't even tell. I do. It's so critical to the operation and like, it's how you tell how fast you're going, at least for me. You count chuffs. Um, I count chuffs and this is me being a musician, not me being an engineer. I count chuffs and I know what, what, how many beat per minute right. is a certain speed based on the wheel size. And so, you know, okay, well, it's the speed limit. And people will come up saying, I think you were going a little fast. And I go, no, I know precisely. I was doing 14 per chuffs minute. per second, sir. I am not going yeah, too exactly, quick. Thank you very much. Exactly. 14 chuffs per second. Oh, I don't know. That seems really but, yeah. fast. That would be, that yeah. would be, yeah. 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 Uh, so, um, uh, might as well start off the episode quickly here. Uh, drunken Grizzly Bears. Um, yes, the this, Drunken Grizzly Bears. That's where bears. we ended yes. off in the last episode was Drunken Grizzly Bears. I don't know what we're, yes. what the deal is so, with that. So, you, you told the story about seeing a, a picture of the corn in between the tracks yes and, and just filled all the way through the rails hold on let me this um, is gonna be a good one let me just uh did you did, could you hear that did you hear that i did did you just pop open a cold one i, I well what? it's a, it's a it's a can of pop i'm not it's not alcohol so oh you know, okay it's... well that's i mean at least you're not violating rule g it's fine so anyway uh so montana Many train things happen in Montana, particularly right. on the BNSF. I had a coworker who was a management trainee back when I hired out on BNSF, uh, whose dad had worked for the railroad for a long time. And so this is a story from his dad out of Montana, out of the Haver area, Haver, Montana, H-A-V-R-E, because it's spelled weird. Anyway, um, <laughs> so they had a train derailment, the ES indeed. And they like sent a bunch of cars full of like grain or barley. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a, you know, covered hopper cars that are full of some kind of multi grain deal. Used uh, for making alcohol. Used used for making alcohol or bread or whatever. Right. Anyway, so they derail these, the cars get punctured on the way down. Uh, it spills everywhere. So they come MOW comes with the big hook, they rerail the cars, they scrap the cars that need to be scrapped and and get all the bits cleaned up because you have to do that and whatever. But they didn't go after every last drop of grain because the product is no longer good. It's been spilled all over the ground. It's dirty. It's mixed in with everything. Shipper doesn't want it. End of you know end of the game. There's no point in them trying to <laughs> recapture all of it. Right. So they just leave it. And what happens to grain uh, when it sits out? Anyone? Yeah, it, Anyone? It, Con? It, um, it ferments is what yes, the, the word correct. is. Yes, correct. Points. It ferments. So the, the grain ferments, and uh, the, the bears had been coming around to eat the grain because, hey, this is free. This is literally a free railroad buffet, you know. Thanks, right. Mr. Buffett. You gave us a buffet. Uh, <laughs> and so the bears were eating the grain this whole time, but as it fermented, uh, the bears would start to get drunk. So these grizzly bears eating enough fermented, you know, mash, basically, which would end up making whiskey how, or beer How or does somebody know that a, a bear is drunk? Like, you can't... Do well, you, you see them well, walking so, loopy or something? Or is that... So, walking loopy, and they really wanted to take a nap. Or and to sleep where's a, a good place to take a nap? On the train tracks? In Montana. 
on the train tracks because the rails are heated by the sun. So the rails make a nice little oven to make a nice little blankie for the bears. Oh my god. And so they would they would get drunk, they would go to take their hangover nap on the train on the track. tracks and then yep, BNSF perfect. was hitting them with trains. Oh my god. So much so that they got sued over it cuz they were killing so many. <laughs> They got sued over of, the drunk grizzly bear. But I mean, okay, but like because they didn't clean up their accident all the way. At least this is the way the story was told to me. And there, there may be some amount of uh, high, uh, you know, uh, don't let. Uh, I feel the like story, they might have hit like you know, one bear things, and but... then everyone complained about it. You know, like I don't know, like right. How many bears do you have to hit before it becomes Who a national knows problem? Where, uh, you know? where the truth is with this, but uh, definitely a fun story either way. But yeah, that's the the drunk grizzly bears on on the BNSF in that's Montana. That's amazing. So. All right, let's test Need this crane theory. Yep. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna be so mad. I got a comment about it saying like, "Yo, cranes are automatic now, and you need to check it out." And I've heard that it is, and you have to spot pretty perfectly for it to work. So oh, good. Let's make sure we get uh, All right, so spotted stop, up so nice stop in the middle. There. Yeah, yeah, you're good. I need to back up a smidge. Actually, All right, you're right in the middle. All right, I'm gonna turn these on. Yeah. I think I clicked them both. Okay, let's see. Let's what see if it, it happens. What's it gonna do? Is it gonna if just... this happens? I mean, so okay, it doesn't. Uh, it won't save us any time, really, but, I mean, we can go do other things. Oh, it's still oh, going! Did you click it? Oh, my God, yeah. No, did, I did not click it. Click I'm just it? watching in third person. Oh, yes! This okay. is amazing! This is the quality of life this is we've such been a, dying for. I mean, they for. need to be faster now. They need to be, like, you know, Yeah, let us little... upgrade the speed so that we don't have to sit here and wait for this animation. But at least we can just kind of, like, you know, not not have to click over and over again and break our, our mice just from... Dude, like, seriously, I had to buy a new mouse because of Railroad's Online. The question is, will it no, auto-stop, though? That's the... That's I've heard that it, it load it to full and then stop, so... Uh, now, what about, exciting, what about, the, I guess the mines wouldn't be as big a deal because they've got those gates, but I wonder what the mine does in this case. Probably, oh, the, probably just the yeah. same as before. I can't imagine they change because the mine you pulled down and pushed up, right? So maybe it, maybe the flow will stop automatically when they fill. I don't maybe. know. That would, that would be nice. It'd be nice not to I waste stuff, but yeah, well, this is convenient. This is definitely a nice quality of life change. I'm frustrated that the chefs aren't synchronized. That's uh, like... I didn't even. I honestly didn't even hear it. So hold on. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Is crane gonna stop? Crane stops. Okay. Now what happens crane if stops. I inch forward to the next? Does it just start up again, or do you have to re-click it? I think you have to re-click them. But yeah, for each car, forward, you got another car and a half to go, Con. One car and a half. Yeah. Yep. Now it's one more. And a half car now. All right. Quarter pull, car. Pull on the brake. Uh, yeah, that ought to work. All right, let's see. So they don't automatically start, so I click them. And I mean, now I guess we this wait isn't and see. Bad. I'm, I'm not going to complain about this. I am really not going to complain about this. I'll complain about the chuff sounds until I'm blue in the face. I will I will complain if this doesn't... Oh, it keeps Oh, there going. it is, man. That's, oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that is that's, actually... That's so great. Now I can blissful. just sit here and enjoy my beverage while the train does yeah, all the work. Yeah, yeah. cheers, Con. Cheers. Yeah, dink. So, um... I get a lot of comments. I got a lot of comments in the last video, um, you know, because I, I read some comments and we're going to keep going with that because it's nice when people have questions. It, you know, it stops me from ever thinking of questions. So I got one it, top rated comment. This is this is top rated. Oh, boy. Okay. okay. And this is this is where my community is at. So they said you should ask Heist the following. A, is your refrigerator running? <laughs> yes, it is. Thankfully, yes. B, your feelings about the narrow gauge big boy. Uh, cursed. Just is it an actual so thing? Cursed. Do they actually no, make there, a big... there, there, there was never an error gauge big boy. Um, okay. If you are a long time viewer of my channel, um, you'll have seen that I've run the real big boy on three foot gauge in another train game because it's just a train fixed to spline and there's no physics, so you can do that. And uh, so the wheels just cursed, overhang the side. And the that's... overhang and it's it's cursed and hilarious. That was actually my ten thousand subscriber special almost wow. a year ago. Uh, so. <laughs> Very fun, but uh, very cursed. And no, they didn't have one in narrow gauge. The biggest, the biggest narrow gauge engine I've heard of um, that was like three foot gauge or meter gauge was uh, the Brazilians had a, like a two eight eight two that was a tank engine still, but it was uh, a bigger version of the Uinta articulated. It's half car con, quarter car. I'm on brake. Five foot. Uh, oh yep, yeah, perfect. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, so I've seen those. Um, and then in the states, I think it was the two six six twos that the Uinta railway had. Uh, right. But uh, those are the biggest I've heard of. So they're not nearly a big boy, but definitely big on the narrow gauge. All right. And then the third question was, what's the meaning of life? 42. 
Yeah, okay, well that was the answer that people gave. That was my top rated comment. Like, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that... <laughs> Vibes, isn't okay. That, One train know. question and two slice of life questions. I'm here for it, you know? Oh, okay, here we go. This is a good one. What is the worst thing you've seen happen at the museum? And what is the most common failure you've dealt with, either at the museum or when you worked at BNSF? Oh man, those are actually two really good questions. Worst thing I've seen at the museum. I mean, it, I, guess I guess let's say depends. worst thing you've seen on railroads in general, because I'm sure you, the BNSF might have some worse, other than the giant poop-filled yeah. diesel engine. Yeah, the poop-filled diesel engine was the thing. Um, at the museum, I mean, like thinking of worst things, we had a suspension failure on the 491, but I didn't see that happen, and that was just a pain in the butt to fix. Um, 491 tried to kill me once by rocketing a part of her boiler off at me while I was doing maintenance on it, which is one of the one of those darndest things that you wouldn't think is Wait, capable of happening. What, but... how, were you doing maintenance with like the boiler under pressure? Like was no, that... so that's the thing. Okay, so I guess we'll tell that story to start here. So um, you need to take her head two cars as well. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm so it. there are kinds of bolts that hold the boiler together. They're called stay bolts. And okay. usually they're threaded into both sheets, the interior firebox sheet and the exterior sheet. That's the outside of the boiler. You can see one more car, half a car now, and another 10 foot. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It might work. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, that'll do. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that should work. Anyway, um, but the thing with those kinds of stay bolts is that they're very rigid. They're called rigid stay bolts, and they don't allow for any freedom of pivoting as the boiler grows and expands. And so early engines were made extremely with only rigid hold, stay Hold bolts. on a sec. You said they're threaded on both ends. Threaded on both ends. They're like a stud. They're threaded into the exterior sheet that you so see sheet, on the outside the and then the interior is, sheet. Like the sheet itself is tapped, and then they thread... Correct. Like the sheets to get, is this a modern thing or is this how they did it back in the day? This is how they did, actually, this is how every boiler still is, as with these kinds of stay bolts. Um, oh, I mean, every boiler has some, um, but definitely in an early way, but, but it's for the state area in the firebox because when it's the boiler that's a circle, the barrel, you can just rely on the hoop stress to hold everything in. But when you try and make a flat sheet, you need to hold that flat sheet flat. And so you make a grid of bolts that holds it together. And so we have rigid stay bolts, and then there's a flat sheet on the outside, and then the interior, which is the firebox sheet, so your fire is on the other side of it, and there's water in between. Um, and then they made a more modern type of stay bolt called a flexible stay bolt, where it's only threaded into the interior sheet, and then on the exterior sheet, it's just got a really big head that rubs up against the sheet. And then there's a, a nipple, pipe nipple, that goes around it outside of it, uh, and then that has a cap on it that seals the pressure. That'll do, Con. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, uh, should, that should... That might... That probably work. We'll see. I don't know. Um, the stopping thing gets a little bit harder when the it weight... It does as the to... load gets, uh, gets yeah. bigger and bigger. Um, anyway, so the flexible stable head allows the sheet to pivot around it. If you only had one, think about it. It's rammed up against the head and it can pivot any way it wants. It can't translate it can't move because of the hole on the head but it can pivot and so right, that but allows if you, assuming the, you have more than one it's not going to move like that would correct be... but it does allow for the growth of the boiler to happen without uh, as much stress because you have that little bit of freedom right okay. and so some engines got a ton of these and most modern engines actually are primarily these style bolts but 491 our big choo choo that we run only has about 40 because she's actually got a pretty old boiler because the way they made the kit 37s anyway so they added these uh as a whole thing and so they hadn't been taken off since 1961 she last ran in 1963 the last time they were inspected was 1961 and every five years of service you're supposed to inspect the heads and make sure that they're all acceptable so you have to take the caps off and so we're taking the caps off for the first time and anyone who's ever taken apart something old that uh, hasn't been taken apart in a long time, and particularly when you think about heat cycling and things, should know that they do not want to come apart anymore. Are they pressed so I... at all, or is it literally just tapped? Like, if it was all brand new, you could just screw it in and maybe put, like, 100 pounds of torque on it or something? Or, like, is it... So, um, the inner sheet is tapped and threaded. So you thread the bolt in and yeah, I don't know what the torque spec would be, probably just as tight as you can get it because that's the torque spec on most steam engines. Um, 
and then the the sleeve goes on around it, and then there's a cap that goes on that. So I'm trying to get the cap off. I'm not trying to get the bolt apart. Right. I'm not even trying to get the bolt. I'm just trying to get the cap off to inspect the head and make sure that you haven't wasted away and broken. That'll do, Con. These are the last two cars. Um, and so I'm trying to get these apart, and I tried like 16 feet of wrench. Believe me, I tried cheater pipes on the end of wrenches on the end of like all the stuff. Couldn't get it. So I go get the Rosebud torch to heat the uh, the caps and try and get them come off. Ah, yes. Always heat up metal within metal. That's going to be good. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's what you have to do. You have to make them swell a little bit, and then you can get it. This one didn't continue. That's weird. Is it too close to the... I don't know. The front one worked, but the... I mean, it's, like, spotted almost perfectly. I don't know. Bugs. Whatever. Let's see. Um. So... Yeah, we'll have to see. Is it going to go now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah now it went. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, uh, so I'd been heating these and then getting them kind of like a dull cherry red, and then you could easily spin them off because they were so much bigger and they swelled off the threads. You know, we've been listening to you talk about these bolts for like five minutes. I haven't heard of the exploding bolt hitting you in the face yet, so I'm, that, I'm kind that's, of... Uh, that's where we're about to get to, Con. Spoilers. Oh, okay, uh, well... So, <laughs> so the cap is... They're about quarter inch thick. They're designed to hold 200 PSI. And they're, they're, I mean, they're pretty heavy. They're about a three inch diameter. So they're pretty solid. Um, <laughs> and so I got to the bottom one and my coworker had told me he drained the boiler all the way and he hadn't. They're, the main this drain is, the is actually not in, at the bottom. But he hadn't drained the boiler. But he hadn't all, drained the boiler. All yes. the way. <laughs> because. Wait, what? That one didn't finish that last one either. It didn't one. finish loading. Weird. Weird. Um, and so you have to take some extra plugs out and stuff which he didn't and i didn't bother to check because management at the time was really trying to rush us and it was not a good safety culture so we sure, didn't blame check. management for everything well, i see how it yeah is. I'd, I'd, I'd blame management any day of the week in uh, in that era but anyways i digress um so uh i get to the the first one that was in the water space and um, somehow, I still don't understand the mechanics behind this. I had the torch on the cap for like 20 seconds, and every other one took like a minute, minute and a half to get hot. So I had it like 20 seconds. Um, it didn't change color, didn't do anything crazy, but the water must have flashed to steam on the inside and built enough pressure rapidly that, I mean, it sounded like somebody put a shotgun in front of my face and let it go. Perfect. It, it Did the bolt snap at all, or just the cap? The, the cap. Flying? The cap just rocketed off. Uh, our roundhouse is five stalls, so you can fit five trains in it. And we were in the first stall, and the cap ended up at the fifth stall, all the way across the shop, like 150 feet away. Yeah, um, that would have been a good trip to the hospital if that would have. Uh, I would have been dead. Yeah, uh, it probably. was right in front of my face. What happened was it rocketed off, and it hit the flange of the drive wheel. And then it bounced out. Had it bounced in, it would have gone through my face. I still have the cap. It put a huge dent in this solid piece of steel. Uh, so I would have been like hole in the head, D-E-D -E -D dead. Um, my boss came running out from his office, which was in the soundproof visitor's gallery, behind closed doors and everything. Closed visitor's gallery door, closed his office door. And he was checking on me because he thought the acetylene tank exploded. That's how loud it was. I, I had a radio. I, I'm very curious about the physics of how that that works. Me too. I would love to know because it was terrifying. Yeah, and that it doesn't, doesn't like it doesn't, doesn't make, make sense objective to me. sense because no. the water should have been able to expand into the boiler. So why did yeah, this like do why this? would it expand towards yeah. a bolt when it can go and just fill the boiler into, with steam into the giant boiler? Yeah, I, unless I, your I boiler was understand. already at pressure, but it wasn't apparently. No, so. it was it was almost entirely drained and it was cold. So right, it doesn't so make that makes any sense. Yeah, that makes but, really no sense to me. Anyway, the last little piece on that is uh, this is actually the reason I have tinnitus in my right ear. It's because uh, about like 10, 15 feet away, I had a radio playing and the explosion shockwave blew the speakers out of the radio. Oh, perfect. That was how powerful of an event this was. And so it blew my eardrum out. I couldn't hear anything for about five minutes afterwards. Um, but like the good little grunt that I was at the time, uh, I went through and I took the rest of them off right afterwards. And then, and um, then, and then terrified, your buddy but, came you know, out and said, pranked you. That's easily my, uh, my worst thing that I've, I've seen. Yeah. I had PTSD over using the acetylene torch for years after that. I will never understand exactly how that worked, but, uh, yeah, that's, that was the worst thing I saw at the museum. What was the second part of that question? Uh, I don't remember, but I, I was trying to think about it. Oh, uh, yeah. Most common failure, most common failure of locomotives. Oh, so or I common mean, failure in, in trains in general. 
steam engines, uh, thankfully, I mean, we do so much to maintain them. Uh, we don't end up having too much of a failure. Usually the Okay, but what's the have... part that wears out the most? Like, my thought would be it would be bearings, most? right? Like, bearings would wear out faster Actually, than the, anything else. The bearings, the bearings don't wear that bad. The, the part that wears out the most is the water glass. You actually need to replace really? the water glasses, the, the glass tube in them it most frequently. It just gets foggy or engine. something? Or? No, it, uh, as you open the valve to check the level by bobbing the water level, it, it starts to erode the bottom of the glass out till it gets too thin, and then it breaks. Um, they're supposed to make it 92 service days, but we actually had one break at like 35 service days on 491 at the end of Polar. Only it was 90 funny. days? The last, the last day of Polar Express, and she broke the water glass right in front of everybody, and it was like... That was terrifying, too. That was something that if, we had if, never seen before. If we the water glass years. breaks, though, right? Like, right. it's connected to the boiler just with, like, like a tube at the top and a tube at the bottom, so it shows you the level of the water in the boiler. But, like, if it Correct. breaks, does boiler water just start leaking out through the glass then? Like, is that... Yeah, exactly. The, it literally the, the just starts, exploded. like, just gravity just forces all the water out it's of the not boiler. It's gravity. It's 200 PSI. I mean, <laughs> it's behind oh pressure. God. So it um, becomes a steam jet, then. Yeah, so, I mean, ridiculously so, but thankfully, I mean, our Rio Grande engines are equipped with a Sergeant Safety water glass, where the glass actually has a second set of glass around it that is shields, and then it has a separate drain tube. So there's the water glass primary drain, and then there's the shield drain, so that if this happens, you don't get steam in your face. Uh, early water glasses didn't have that, but they came up with this pretty quick. Do they have a um, shutoff? Was, like, if you, like, if this happens, yes. then you could just turn it off, and then there's no, you have no level indicator but at least you're not yeah getting steam in the you're face you're not getting you're not losing water in the boiler and you're not blowing water right. everywhere and so yeah we shut it off as quick as we could um and you i mean you have to test those shutoff valves every single day and this is like the most critical thing you can do you need to verify that you have water going to the way to measure water right like if you don't have water you have a bomb so right. that's the most critical thing so we ended up did continue to run that day of polar but that was only because we still had two ways to measure water. We had the tricox and a second water glass. So we lost the primary glass, but it was like, this is the last night. We'll get it replaced. And it's, it's actually already been replaced despite the engine not being in service yet. So We should uh, flip this over and run the main there. Yeah, we should actually run on the main. Yeah. Know, do, the, do the thing that we Even though I've been to trolling do. slowly because you've had some stories. So I've just been like, you <laughs> I've know. I've had some stories to tell you. Yeah, we can't run it. There's no speed. reason to go super quick here if you're just, you got stories to tell. It's a pretty small delivery as far as things go. But we can also hump at the end, though, just to really like. That's you true. Know. You know, I, I do love humping at the end. Yeah, that's great. I never, you, a million years, I never would have thought the water glass is the thing to wear yeah, out. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing that wears out. That's the most commonly replaced. I, I honestly I mean, would never have thought that. I would have thought that the glass would have just held up, like, you know, forever, right? Like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't care, but. Nope. Yeah, Crazy. Uh, it erodes away pretty quick. So um, beyond that, like on Steam stuff, I mean, yeah, the rod brasses tend to get hammered pretty bad. So if you're running a lot, if your daily trip is really, really far, yeah, okay, you're, you're going to be doing brasses more frequently than your big rebuilds. Right. But I mean, that's, I mean, for us at the museum, that's, we don't run that many miles, so it doesn't really affect us. So, I mean, we'll do rod brasses like once every other overhaul, you know, every 30 years, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of one of those things. But, you know, if you're running tonnage, slogging up the, the railroad at Coombrace or whatever, I mean, they, they do bearings and brasses a lot more frequently. Oh, I had another um, question, too. Someone said, uh, sure. th th which is this is kind of a probably a quick answer. Someone said, Heiss, what does Kenosha actually smell like? <laughs> it's it smells like hard liquor. That's the <laughs> oh, joke. God. Uh, so so Kenosha, people think of Wisconsin because of uh, reasons. No, I don't understand bit. this whole Kenosha reference. Like it's just like so, it's just like So this is this is the stupidest of inside jokes of inside jokes. Okay. okay. Is it between so, you and um, your like five railroad buddies and like three other people yes, get the? Oh, yes, okay, perfect. Yes, oh, and then now, now of course it's on the internet and everyone on YouTube, uh, at least on my channel, many people have picked up on it, but it always gets a question because people don't know about it. So, Kenosha Pass is part of a rail alignment that the Colorado and Southern Railroad operated originally, the Denver, South Park, and Pacific that we have some equipment from in the game. Um, and 346, which is one of our engines that was leased to that railroad, ran over Kenosha Pass a lot in the 1930s. Uh, and in 1936, her engineer ES indeed uh, and binned, binned 346 pretty bad. Um, he hit he hit a, a sharp curve doing like 40 mile an hour after they had been running as a helper. So they're running light downhill. Um, the fireman was terrified and jumped off, but the engineer didn't seem to think there was anything wrong. 
hit the curve going like 40 mile an hour, they estimate. Uh, and it was a 25 mile an hour curve, but the track was also in bad condition, apparently. And he, and he, he died? Like, and that was it for the engineer? It, it, it rolled over. Uh, she rolled over bad, totally ruined the locomotive. Uh, the engineer was pinned in the cab, and he died three days later of burns from being burned to death by the steam that was leaking and everything, which, oh, talk about a crappy way to go, man. Um, not fun, but the the oh, joke. Oh crap! Can you uh, click this switch up here? This is a uh, this is an unfinished. Oh, I did I did some reworking since the last episode of. Uh, oh okay. Uh, um, I got rid of the Y, and I realized if I rearranged the um the back uh the two side siding switching areas. I, I want to say shunting so bad, but I'm trying to correct myself. <laughs> good, like, good. Yes, he's learning, everyone. <laughs> no, I'm not learning. It's a problem. It's peer pressure. Okay, it's bad. Don't give well, into I peer mean, pressure. That's... That's, but that's, anyway, yeah, so I, I, I changed the two switching areas and I realized instead of making the bow yards, if I have them so like, I don't know what they're called, like trapezoidal yards where it like they, the input and output directions are the same angle, then you end up with like a 43 to 45 meter radius curve at the back of this oh, industry. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. So it's enough to get like a nice loop that doesn't really so suck. We're, we're doing a turn back loop, which I mean might have been, I mean, there are times that those do exist, so that's fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's, it's, I realize this corner here is just as steep as the corner in the back, so it actually isn't that bad and um it's kind of it's kind of clean for this just because it is an end of line industry you don't really need much gotcha and then that other gotcha. that other track will eventually go to like the old refinery and stuff but it's a secret can't talk about it Shh. oh boy I'm, I'm excited to learn secrets he, he hasn't even told me everyone so no, i'm <laughs> i'm like i'm working on a secret project it's gonna be exciting well uh, maybe we'll catch that next time or something or, or yeah, maybe hopefully. one of the I don't next know how, times oh how much yeah, yeah easy easy easy, uh, easy, easy, easy hold easy. on con, a minute con, 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 yeah con. yeah hold on hold on hold on let me just it's not gonna break use your brakes sir i am using please. my brakes sir please okay there it is uh we have an issue sir oh we're, we're we, we don't have space to store all this lumber yeah. Well, we can just leave the loaded cars here. Well, like, that's, bring the, that's a we thing. We can just bring the rest back to the freight depot. Honestly, just sell it. Or we could do that, too. That's, we just that's need the fine. money. Like, let's be real. We just, need, we just need money. It's true. That's true. Anyway, is... um, the the last of the Kenosha thing is that the uh, the engineer was reportedly drunk. Oh, uh, perfect. So no, that's good. that was why he binned it. So Smells Like Kenosha is uh, in reference to any time there would be hard liquor uh, around or whatever near 346 we would joke that she was going why does it smell like kenosha because that oh, was the gotcha. last time she smelled it full speed full speed ahead full always canvas. responsible to keep the load on the very back of the train that's always the best best way to get things done this is actually kind of convenient because we can just use it's this fine. train we're gonna go past the freight depot and then we can just go straight up the hump line and hump and reverse and it'll all be totally not that's gonna proper I feel like you would never yeah, hump with a tender, tender first, but you know. Yeah, it's not ideal because then you uh, you have to carry the water the highest because you'd be at risk of exposing the crown sheet if you're going tender first. But I mean, right. it's it's fine. It's like and it's you'd also you'd also have to uh, have a tender that's strong enough to actually push and not just. <laughs> well, I mean, the tender's got to be able to take the load of the whole train. So yeah, that's but I thought tenders really under issue, compression right? kind of suck a little bit. Um, they suck because they, they hunt and hit into the engine if they don't have buffers, but un otherwise, I mean, like, there's plenty of times where tenders have run in compression. Most of them ended up getting steel frames uh, or reinforced wood frames, although in this era they were probably all wood frame, but right. you would be surprised if you've never looked at it, Con, because, I mean, I don't know how much you ran into the structural properties of white oak, but uh, white oak is actually really, really, really strong, particularly in compression, and that's what most of the structural components... In case uh, you didn't know, Heiss, I actually have a diagram on my computer of strengths of woods, so... Do you really? Well, I had well. one at one point, yeah. Like, birch wood. <laughs> like, birch wood is one of the weakest, and, like, oaks are strong. Maples are kind of in the middle. Pines are okay, but, like, usually pretty soft. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was I, definitely, I, um... I, I, I took material science once look right yeah but it's it's not often that anyone needs to worry about the material science of like of certain kinds of woods anymore right because if okay it's a wood building well then you're making it out of dimensional lumber that's just a thing and then people know how to work with yeah, it yeah right? and dimensional lumber is just like yeah it's cut from a tree a that's two by four thousand and, times and the size and we assume that the two by four is this and there you go boom yeah. done sold uh Versus like, oh yeah, no, the tender's end sole is made out of white oak, and we had to do this, and blah, blah, blah. Well, and then you've you know, got all we the... We do that all the time. You've got all the pressure treatments with wood that people do nowadays as well, right? So it's like, 
wood is not just like oh you know you don't just cut down a log and boom that's your house you know what i mean like it's exactly like... exactly there's a lot of science that goes into it so someone asked me uh, to ask you in my youtube comments what would i like about scrap mechanic and when are we what gonna play it would you like about I've, scrap mechanic i've never played it i've seen a couple of videos that you've sent me of stuff you've made but I don't know how it works. I don't know what goes into it. I've never really dove into it. Do you like spending hours and 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 hours trying to figure out one basic thing? You'll love scrap mechanic. So okay, it's 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 a it's a great building game for what it is. Like if you want to build stuff, but like it, I mean, you're a mechanical engineer, so you might like. I enjoyed Scrap Mechanic because of the mechanical aspect of things. And at some point in time, I will take a long time to figure out how to set up a proper. Like I made a wall shirts valve mechanism in Scrap Mechanic, and it worked. So like it was, you know. It didn't use steam to power it, but like it showed the motions and how you can, you know, manipulate a wall shirt. So there's like a little drawbar, and I showed that you could manipulate this drawbar up and down, which changes the timing, which changes the wheel from forward to reverse, right? Yeah. yeah Just yeah. exactly like it would work, except, you know, the scale is a little bit off and all that. So sure, that's cool. And like, it's cool to make mechanical systems like that. But there is a lot of like, like, Railroads Online has jank physics, and so does Scrap Mechanics. So there's a lot of okay. like learning curve to get around the jankiness you know like to uh, make yes yeah, so it's so it's kind of like gary's mod in that yeah aspect, so it's huh? like you can make like a cool car or a cool truck but it's probably going to drive really bad unless you know the physics and how that behaves do you know what i mean like it's gotcha you got to learn the not the real yeah. physics but the and game trains, physics to make anything happen trains and scrap mechanic are are a little difficult just because um as you make something more and more complex it gets more and more laggy and so if you want to put down you can there's mods you can use to put down like custom rail tiles which like have rails set out in pre-positioned spots and stuff and that's great but if you make a train and they try and attach it with like three or four cars it will be very laggy just because of all like the interactions of all the pins and everything connecting it's a you lot know? of physics to do yeah yeah like every wheel is on its own bearing every every swivel right. point is its own bearing so like every... i know i know in gary's mod that like a lot of people end up like turning off collisions and they weld stuff together and and uh, they parent stuff to stuff so there's no physics being done except for like the yeah, wheel it doesn't, it and doesn't, this is now all the train body way. no Ooh, scrap mechanic okay. is everything is everything has physics with everything so if you have a parent yeah. and you have a child smacking the parent the child will smack the parent which is cool for a lot of cool things like you could make all sorts of neat stuff but there's a lot of calculations happening they have a slider that lets you simplify the physics but um, it uh, it also makes the physics behave janky in some it, it, different jank. Yes, yeah, my favorite so kind. Like, <laughs> yeah, so you gotta it's it's kind of I don't know it's it's cool. Is it it's a hundred percent? I I would. There's no way I can argue that it's not worth the price. Like it is a hundred percent worth the price. It's a it's a cheap game relatively compared to like all these AAA titles, and you will get more than enough hours out of it for the price. Like hundred percent. Um, that being said, there's a lot of jank. So. Okay. Well, that. Uh, that but I mean, fun. I also have like almost three thousand something hours in it, so I mean, I'm probably not the best. You've got more hours than that in Team Fortress Two, just. Saying. Yeah. So I'm probably not the best critique because, like, I would still play it no matter what because, like, I'm just used to the jank and it, you know, it doesn't. The jank doesn't bother me anymore. You were forged by it. Yeah, yes. I'm forged exactly. I'm forged by the jank. Okay, we're all unloaded, and Khan, I have twenty eight hundred and five dollars now. So we made like Wait, almost a thousand bucks. How much, how much is it for an bucks. engine? How much is it for an engine? We Hold want thirty six hundred for the Moscow, right? I is think? it thirty? Really, thirty six hundred? Yeah, so we're gonna have to run another train. So. No, you know what we're gonna have to do? We're gonna have to buy two hoppers, and then. Oh, we can do that too. Because yeah, our coal mine has ninety coal, so we can buy two hoppers and then bring all the hoppers up to the coal mine, Ooh. and then deliver all the coal but anyway let's go hump because we got a hump let's go hump I'm, I'm protecting the shove before we hump so i know uh, nobody asked yeah. but i figured i would tell a story because nobody asked Ooh. hey con can you can you tell us a story yeah there you go perfect no so you were talking about like the the like the failures that you've seen at the railroad and stuff you know and almost yeah. getting killed yeah, yeah. by an exploding bolt i almost got killed by a Details. forklift once so this is oh dude true story so like we, well yeah so i was working and uh in automotive there's um you know you have forklifts carrying racks and there's this thing called racks right and a rack is basically just a big metal square cage and it's not okay. like a cage with mesh but they're like a metal frame basically and they're always standard size and they have pins in them so you can stack them on top of each other and inside the rack you have 
like these foam cutouts or whatever for holding parts, right? Fo they're usually different shapes, sizes. Some of them are just tray racks where it's just like two flat shelves with like plastic lining and you just like rest parts on each other. Um, or some of them have like actual molded foam where each part is like in these foam things. And the reason you use racks is no matter what the part is that's in the rack, the rack is a standard size. So it can always get right, stacked right. and you can have them in different aisles and whatever. So to move these around, you have forklifts and racks have two forklift holes on either side. So you can grab them from either side. You can just lift them off the previous rack and, you know, move them around, right? And uh, so I was I was walking in this forklift area. There's when every factory I've worked in, there's always like forklift areas and then there's pedestrian areas. And you're not supposed to walk in the forklift areas unless you have to for some reason. So I right. had to walk in the forklift area for some reason because I'm, uh, you know, doing some whatever, checking something or whatever. And um, when you do that, you wear a safety vest because all the forklift guys, you know, they want to be able to see you and everything else. But I'm also in, like, I'm a, I'm a paint yeah. engineer, so I'm also in, like, a completely blue, static-free paint suit. So it's really hard right. to miss me. Like, I'm, like, basically in these blue coveralls. Oh, we got to go to the hump side of yep, things. Yeah, I'm getting the, getting the switch lined. Hopefully, okay. if I can beat Let me there. Know when you're good. Lined, go, yep. Keep bringing um, back. But anyway, so so I'm, I'm in this like blue paint suit. I'm also in like, you know, an orange safety vest on top of that. So it's like, there's no way you can miss me, right? And I've got, um, you know, steel toed shoes on, all that nonsense. Safety glasses and all that. Um, but no, no hard hats or anything, right? But we're I'm walking around and I'm walking and I'm walking behind this forklift and I see this forklift and he's trying to like deliver parts to the line and I'm behind him and I'm a little bit off to the left and I'm basically at the point where like I'm going to pass this forklift. But a forklift, if you've ever heard, seen a, a, a tall mast forklift, right? The mm -hmm. mast of a forklift is kind of these like black metal, um, it's like a black metal A-frame, right? And there's yeah. like, yeah, usually yeah. they're nested. So it's usually three of them that are nested together with like a cable or a hydraulic system. A lot of them are cable, but some of them are hydraulic. And, and basically, it's like a cable that, that pulls the three nested, like, telescopes them apart from each other, right? Okay. And that's how, like, 90% of forklifts gain height. Now, the obvious problem with that is if you ever have one of those, like, extending telescopes as a kid, if you pull them right to the very edge, there's very little telescope that's left in, you know, the the, the next piece, right? So it's easy for you to, like, take one. Like, like if you, I, I don't know how to explain this. You know what I mean, though, right? Like if you telescope a piece out, like, you have a, you have like a tube inside a tube and you pull them to the very edge where it's like right about to come out, like the very limit of it, there's very little like leftover tube. So it's very easy to bend the two tubes, right? Relative Correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, so this forklift's carrying a, a rack full of super heavy parts and for some reason pulled it off the top shelf. Mast is at the tallest height. And I like, out of the corner of my eye, I look, and before I walked in front of this forklift, I look and I see the top section of the mast, like there's three sections. I see the top section is forward by like half an inch or an inch compared to the one below it. So I stopped moving and then two seconds later, right in front of me, this rack falls down, crashes to the floor, super oh loud bang, God. parts everywhere. The forklift like completely bends in half, the whole mast goes down and I'm like six feet from getting crushed from this rack. And I was like, well, could have died today if I didn't look up. Like it was. Yep. Yeah. Keep your head on a swivel, folks. It There's was one of those where I'm just talk, like, thank man. God I noticed that thing was freaking leaning because he was right at like the limit of the height, so it just wasn't enough material to hold the weight of right. the rack, so and the he, whole he was thing just collapsed. The the load limit of the forklift or he didn't get the load far enough on the rack or or on the, the, the forklift to, was just yeah. overextended for whatever reason right like with right it. right but yeah the whole the whole mast of the forklift bent in half came down with the rack on it parts everywhere oh yeah it was a nightmare that's a bad day but and i was hey, like cool you're still here i'm i'm glad i i looked and yeah so that was that was fun that was a good day. No kidding. Yeah, that's uh, that's. Don't die in an in industrial accident if you can avoid it, folks. If you ever work in a factory, it's, I loved working in factories. It was great. It was a fantastic. I mean, it was it was uh, super cool. Super. It's fun. a cool yeah, experience. Sure. But like, did you set the hump switches too? Are we humped? Uh, I mean, we looked like we were lined all the way to the left, which all is right, where these cars we go, right? We'll find so. out. But yeah, it was super fun working in factories and stuff. It's just you uh, you have to be so careful. Like you always have to watch out for everything because it's. Uh, you never know what could go oh, wrong yeah, or what could happen. And the, the second you get complacent and not pay attention... Yeah, that's it. ...is that's... when you get maimed or dead or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, it was fun times. I've seen some I've seen some fun stuff. We'll have to talk about it some other time. Ask me the story next time, because the last time you oh, talked man. about drunk grizzly bears... Here, here we go. This here's, is not about this preview. is not about railroads, unfortunately. It's not railroads talk. Um, but ask me the story of the five-horsepower motor that crushed four-and-a-half cars. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, it's a good story. <laughs> There was a five, five horsepower. horsepower. So I'm not even so joking. It, it was a five horsepower very, motor that crushed very four big and a half motor cars. That spins, spins really slow. Very, right? very big five horsepower motor that spins very slow. But yes, okay. and it's geared right, like I crazy. Guess the, I guess the plot. Yes. But it is a five horsepower motor that I'm not even. It crushed like literally four and a half cars. It was awesome. Oh my god. It was terrible, but like yeah. Yeah. Was, that's uh, next time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Those was good times. But yeah, there we go. Um, next episode, we're gonna. I think we gotta get some coal. We need. We need another. Uh, Buy running some hoppers, sure. run some coal, yeah. make some money. Yeah, 100%. Uh, maybe, maybe see your secret thing? I don't even know what it is. I hope I get it done before we record okay. next. I'm going to have to okay. work extra okay. diligently. It is proving to be difficult, mainly because uh, you can't float foundations in the air anymore. You have to have a base for them. You just got to stack them on top of each yeah, other. Yeah, and so you got to like get the right stack for it to work. That's, that's just the frustrating part of it. So I'm just trying to work through that because uh, floating track is not a thing, so... But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you, of course, uh, you know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, check out Heist's channel, and remember... Check out Khan's channel, too. Yeah, remember, five TV. horsepower motor, four and a half cars. It's very important. Many, many dunk crush sounds, yes. Yeah, well, five <laughs> horsepower motor, man. You know, you ever thought five horsepower wasn't enough? It's just, uh, I'll tell you, you're wrong, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for this one. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. See you all later. Bye.